Welcome everyone to Contain Yourself. Uh, yeah, it's a pun, I'm sorry. Uh, we're uh, gonna go ahead and uh, introduce ourselves and uh, get started with the talk. So, uh, James, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, so I'm James Sturdivant. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft. Uh, I've uh, been contributing to the Bytecode Alliance for a while now. Uh, I got started doing it, uh, contributions through RunWazi, which is a plugin for Kubernetes. I do quite a bit of contributions upstream to Kubernetes as well. Uh, and I can start fire with uh, just sticks and stones, six different ways, and writing code is only one of them. Uh, so. And I'm Taylor Thomas. I'm an engineering director at Cosmonic, a WebAssembly startup. Um, I'm also a Bytecode Alliance recognized contributor. Um, I do a lot of stuff in that space as well. I'm also the CNCF WASM working group co-chair. Um, and I'm a serial open source contributor. I'm a WASM cloud maintainer, uh, an emeritus uh, core maintainer of Helm, uh, co-creator of Crustlet. I'm only saying these things not to show off, but to say that I'm coming from a place of, of knowledge here. Um, maybe too much getting bitten by these different things. So we're gonna go ahead and talk over our agenda for today um, and then just kind of dive straight in. We're mostly focused on the demos because we want people to, to see what this is. And this is very much meant to be a technical overview for people to understand like what's going on in this space, especially around WASM. So we'll obviously start off with the why does this even exist? Um, and then talk a little bit about like what WIT is, packages, components, all that. You've probably heard some of this, but we want to level set. And then we'll go over the spec and then a lot of demos and we're gonna be a little bit wild with our demos. Um, maximal anger from the demo gods uh, type of thing. And then we'll talk a little bit about future plans. So with that, I do have a question before we go to the next. How many people know, like, not just have heard of, but like know what OCI is? I just doing this for, okay, so we're about, it's a little bit better. We'll probably zoom through this next slide pretty quick, but just to review for people so we knew. We didn't wanna go too deep into this in case there was issues, so. Take yeah, so if you've ever run Docker Run or Docker Pull, you've interacted with OCI. Uh, OCI is the open container initiative that was created after Docker created their really cool container spec specification. Uh, and they wanted to make it so that it was reusable across um, different registries and other things. Uh, so if you don't know exactly what's going on underneath the hood in the uh, container platform, uh, container uh, spec, the, uh, there's some JSON that just describes some metadata around what uh, is contained inside the Docker image. That Docker image is usually just some form of tar files that are packaged up. Uh, and then the, that the, each one of those pieces of information is content addressable, and so you can kind of hash it together and you get this nice little package at the end of it. Uh, and so this enabled container registries to be able to implement this across all the different clouds and became very uh, prolific across uh, everybody's deployments. Uh, and so at some point, someone said, hey, uh, since it's just some JSON and some binary format, uh, we can take and stuff other things into this OCI uh, format. Uh, and so there was this thing called artifacts and they've recently uh, define this as a specification in the OCI 1.1, uh, but you can put Helm charts and SBOMs. Uh, there's a uh, platform out there called Singularity and they put their kind of container into these artifacts here. Uh, and you can really kind of stuff and put any kind of content or shape or size inside these OCI artifacts. And so we said, why not OCI? Or why not, um, why not WASM? Uh, and the answer to that was we really wanted to remove the barriers to, uh, to adoption inside the cloud native ecosystem. Um, there is a ton of existing tooling out there that works with OCI that we didn't need to necessarily resolve for WASM. Um, and so uh, out there, there's registry clients, there's ORAS, there's all the Docker CLIs, um, there's RegCTL, there's, I mean, there's just a ton of different tooling out there that knows how to interact with the registries. Uh, on top of that, we didn't have to solve some of the uh, issues around image signing and verification, um, and we can get SBOMs out of this as well. Uh, and then on top of that, WASM was a, um, WASM is a cross-platform solution. Uh, and one of the key ways people were distributing it at one point was inside Docker containers, which are inherently not cross-platform. Uh, and so, we wanted to potentially solve that problem. 
and then we also were looking at all the various WASM um, solutions out there, and they all actually came up with an artifact type of their own. Uh, and and, and a particularly in a container runtime, uh, we didn't want to necessarily need to know about uh, each platform's particular artifact type. Uh, and so we wanted to uh, have a single solution that would work across, the, uh, uh, across all the different platforms. Uh, and it all comes down to kind of using that existing end-to-end -end, uh, experience that our the cloud native ecosystem is familiar with. Yeah, so before we dive into the rest of this, <clears throat> I wanted to give a quick glossary of all this. Like I said, you may have heard these things, but it's really important to understand these because we're gonna use these terms a couple times throughout the demos and the rest of the talk. Um, the first thing is WIT. You've probably at least heard it and probably seen it if you have been here today. Um, that's WASM interface types. It's technically supposed to be capitalized. A lot of times we just capitalize the first letter and yeah, just welcomed into consistency. So it is the text format that's the IDL for WASM components. It defines the interfaces. Um, and then the component itself is the WASM binary that can communicate and be composed with the other components that use those same interfaces. So you can take one interface that uses um, like, or exports something like WASI HTTP and if something imports WASI HTTP, you can compose those together. Now this last one is probably one you haven't heard today. There is something called a WIT package, and when we say a WIT package, this is the a WIT interface encoded as a component. So it's an actual binary file. It looks and reads just like a component, but it is just the WIT inside of it. And so this is, the, like I said, it's binary format, and it's currently the way that we share these interfaces. There's, we've been having conversations about improving this and changing this, we'll talk a little bit about the end. But when we say WIT package, we're referring to a binary file that contains these interfaces that are defined. So, yeah, I think James has a really good story here yeah. about the, the specification and um, what happened here and what, what kind of came out of all this. And I don't know what happened to our text there, but we will edit yeah, that. So, uh, if you're interested in seeing the spec, this is the QR code there, so you can scan it there. We're going to show it to you in a moment. Uh, but about a year and a half ago, I got involved with the RunWazi project. And the, I came in from uh, the SIG Windows uh, space inside Kubernetes. And I was supposed to add Windows support to run WASI. And when we did that, I um, was looking and had been promised that WASM is this cross-platform solution, but I couldn't take the WASM binaries that we were running and run them across the Windows nodes and the Linux nodes. Uh, and so I went and looked, and uh, I think Radu's maybe out here somewhere. He had put out a blog post saying, we want to use these OCI artifacts. So I went and talked to him, and they went and uh, they we were like, yeah, we've got this awesome thing in spin, and we use this artifact. And then I talked to Taylor, and Taylor has his awesome artifact over in WASM Cloud. Uh, but then I said, hey, Containerd folks, can we bring in both of these? And they're like, well, it would be nice if we could have a single format that is going to come together. Uh, and so we got a bunch of people across the um, different ecosystems and um, open source organizations to uh, come together in the CNCF working group, and uh, we spent a couple months discussing. We, we thought this might go really fast. Uh, it ended up being a couple months because there are some ex extra edge cases that we needed to address. Uh, but yeah, we, we had everybody from uh, the, the CNCF, uh, OCI organization, uh, the uh, BCA. We got them all together and, and uh, hashed it out for a few, a few months, and this is what we came up with. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the spec. This is kind of the meat of what it means. So if you are familiar with OCI, the thing on the right is gonna look really familiar to you. Um, it's just a normal uh, image manifest format. You'll see that in the media type at the top. <clears throat> um, the special thing here is that right now, everything is represented as a single component. So there's always a single layer with the media type of application WASM, and then it's digest in size. We've reserved the additional layers to be able, you can, if you have a component, it could be composed of multiple components, which in and of themselves could be composed of extra components. And there is a future here where we'll be able to call, I call it the exploded view, we'll find out what we actually call it, when you can explode that back out and have each of those as an individual layer. And then that will help dedupe uh, a lot of the storage things that could happen here. If everybody's using some similar dependencies, it'll dedupe that. But right now it's a single layer. And so that looks kind of what you'd expect on the left, or on the right. On the left, we have the actual thing that makes it the, an OCI 
artifacts and the spec for the WASM itself. And that's what is the media type. It's the application VND WASM config v0.json. That's the type. And this is meant to encapsulate the basic information about what is contained inside of this manifest. This allows us in the future to do some other cool things like indexing, which I'll mention uh, down the line. But you'll always have WASM. You'll have an OS, which is WASI IP2 or WASI IP1, or, um, or just WASI IP1. And then you have layer digest for a funny reason that I can tell you all not during this talk about what's required inside of the OCI spec, because it's an entertaining one. Um, but then underneath that, you have the component. And that's the big thing there. You'll see that when this is pushed, and the libraries we've created for this actually do this automatically, but you put all the exports and the imports that come from your world. When you, when you create a component, it always has a world that has, says, I'm importing this interface and I'm exporting this interface, and it lists all of them inside of here. So this allows us to look at something without even downloading the artifact and know exactly what's inside of it. So <clears throat> with that, we're gonna go straight into demos now, because, and I'm just gonna tell you, we're gonna, we're really trying to tempt fate here. Um, to prove that what we're doing here is not fudged in any way, shape, or form, we're gonna be swapping computers a couple times, not each other's, but like swapping between the two to show this actually working. Um, so I'll let James take it away with this first thing he's gonna build and show why this matters so much and why it's so important, why we wanted to let you all know. Can everyone see the text? You don't have to see like all the, like th this is just the, the basic stuff, but yeah. yes. If you have problems, let us know. One more? I'm big and one more. Okay. My rule is always do it until you think it's too big and then do it twice more. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what I have here is a C Sharp project and we are going to build a WASI HTTP request handler with, um, with the wit that we just saw with an OCI artifact. Uh, not gonna go too deep into the, CS, the uh, C Sharp project here. Um, I think the key thing is that we're, we're actually gonna be building to uh, the WASI uh, um, endpoint. And so uh, the key part here is we have some tooling that if we, oops, wrong one. Uh, if I uncomment that, and that's going to, what this is gonna do is go reach out to this registry up here um, the WASI HV2, it's gonna go grab those WASI uh, interface files. Uh, it's, we're gonna tell it, there's a couple different worlds in there, so we have to tell it which world to, to build, um, to extract. Uh, and then we're gonna put it into that WASM package, or the WIT package that was mentioned previously. The tooling inside C Sharp will actually go out and regenerate um, the, the bindings for us, and then uh, create a, um, a WASM component for us. So if I run publish, you'll see over here on the side, it's gone out to the registry, pulled down the WIT into a WASM module. We could extract this out to the WIT files if we wanted to, um, but the WIT bind gen actually is familiar enough, uh, is smart enough to be able to read that binary format and generate a component from that. Behind the scenes, I'm just gonna quickly show you here, um, and it, it actually extracted out the auto-generated things for WIP bind gen in the behind the scenes there. Uh, and if you're interested in C Sharp, I'm doing a talk tomorrow about this. Okay, so, so now we've got a WASM component, uh, and I can do just a little bit more with the tooling that's built into C Sharp and push this up to a registry. So. Um, down here, I've got uh, a tool called Wackage that's built into the uh, tool, uh, tool chain for C Sharp, and we're just gonna push it up to the registry using that binary. Uh, and so now, we're gonna switch over to Taylor. Okay. So, like I said, we're gonna totally tempt fate here and swap the computers, because we are like that. Um, here, keep the dongle. Okay, so let's share it over here. And we're gonna do this a couple times, actually. So cross your fingers that we just load and we're okay. Perfect, okay. So everyone can see that. Now um, I'm gonna share, yay, terminal demos. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and show this right here and embiggen the text for everybody. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I have a Go project 
Okay, and this, this Go project is very simple. It's the same, basically the same thing that he had written in C Sharp. We're not trying to show off the super cool things you can build up with Wasm. We're just trying to show what you're able to do here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, um, this project right here, and I'm gonna do something a little bit different, but is actually doing a lot of the same things under the hood. So any project has a, has a world that you define that tells you what you're gonna do, or you specify like what he did where you say, I'm gonna use the proxy world. So if I look at my WIT directory, I'm able to see this world.wit, and this is where I specify that I'm exporting a, a server, uh, exporting as a server. And just to show that this happens, I'm gonna actually um, rm the depths here, so we don't have anything left, and we just have the world. And then what I'll run, and this is where we hope conference Wi-Fi holds up, um, I'm gonna run wash build. Now wash is the command line tool for, uh, for Wasm Cloud, but it's actually in this step just wrapping all the open source tooling. So that wackage thing that you saw um, James show off, I'm using the exact same library underneath the hood and I'm pulling from the exact same interfaces that he also pulled from. So let's go ahead and build it. It's gonna take a second while put like, once again, cross your fingers, and pulling down from the conference Wi-Fi. Um, so we'll give that a second to, to go over the conference Wi-Fi and we'll see it pull everything down and do something very, very similar. Um, it's, we're using this exact same tooling case, so it now built it for me. If I do that wit again, you'll see that I have the exact same stuff and all of its transitive dependencies as well that have been put out here, um, as well as some other ones that, we, that I was using in this one. So I'm gonna, I went ahead and, and pulled out the, these packages, they're all there, and now I'm able to build this component. And what's really cool is that you can now inspect each of these components, which we'll see again, but if I do, um, you can do this with Wasm tools. I just have it built into wash and it's less words to type. So I'm gonna do it that way. Um, so if I do wash inspect wit um, build and I do my hello world, we'll see that it shows exactly what I'm using. So I can see that I'm pulling in some standard WASI stuff and then I am exporting WASI HTTP incoming handler. So I just built this. It's the standard component like normal. All these things are here. And I once again pulled all of this just from, just from OCI. This knows to go to these OCI, uh, these OCI repositories and pull these things down for us. And you can configure the tool chain to actually point to whatever you need to. So you have an internal artifactory, great, use that. All of those things are now built into a lot of these tool chains. It's in C Sharp. Wash Build does this for any language it supports. It's being added into Go. Um, all of these things are uh, kind of accelerating very quickly. So now I'm gonna do the same thing that he did and publish it. Um, once again, I'm gonna do wash push, and yes, it is doing the exact same thing that his thing was doing. It's using the underlying wackage tool chain and these libraries we found, it's going to parse it out and push up the manifest for me. And so I can say, okay, let's, let's wash push this. I'm pushing the thing I just built, and it will push. Oops, I forgot to export again. Da -da -da. Now we should be able to push. Once again, over conference Wi-Fi, so cross fingers. Okay, there we go. Now it pushed. So um, that is the exact same tool chain as before. So now we're gonna swap back to James. Once again, different computer, something I just pushed, and we'll see what happens next. It worked. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so we are now back on my machine. Oops. Let's make this bigger here. Uh, and he's pushed up his Go code, uh, or his component built from Go. Uh, I'm going to pull it down locally here. Um, so I'm going to run, I'm going to use that wackage tool. You could also use ORAS or RegCTL and just extract that. Uh, one layer. Uh, the wackage tool does it all for you, so you don't have to necessarily like do a, three or four commands. Uh, and this, that's potential like improvement that we could make there for some of those other tools. Uh, so I've, I've written it down locally. Uh, and now, just to demonstrate, and I want to point out here that I'm currently working directly on my Windows machine. Uh, and so he built that on his Mac. Um, and I'm going to do wasm time serve. So I've now served up that wasm component. 
uh, I can go over and do curl oops, local host. And we got hello from, from Go. So, woohoo! Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, it's going to get better. <laughs> uh, so, what we're going to do now is we're going to swap over. This is actually a Linux VM that I'm, I'm SSH'd into. And we're going to take both of those two components and we're going to run them on Kubernetes. So, uh, without going into too many details, uh, there's a runtime class. This tells Kubernetes, hey, I'm not going to use the standard um, runtime uh, run C uh, container D shim. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one that knows how to use WASM. Uh, in the deployment, uh, this is going to look like a, just a standard deployment. The one thing that you do see here is that there's a runtime class, and we're just referencing that, one time, that runtime class. Uh, and then I've got... More size. And oh. big and enhance. Yep, sorry. Forgot to do that. Um, so I've got that runtime class. Uh, and then underneath containers, this is just a standard Kubernetes deployment uh, spec. I'm going to say go. I'm going to reference that OCI artifact that we had, uh, that Taylor did. And just for fun, I'm going to also reference the one that I built in C Sharp. Uh, and then I'm just going to tell the proxy that, hey, go run this on 81, because they're going to be sharing. It's a pod in Kubernetes, and so they share the network namespace, and we don't want them to stomp on each other. Uh, and then I'm going to create a service that exposes those two ports. So here, um, I have a, just a local kind cluster. Uh, it's running. There's not a whole lot um, on it. Oh, ah, I forgot to clean up the, the WASI demo. Uh, it's okay. We can delete it and recreate it. That's what this is all for. Yeah. So I'll just delete that. Uh, K get pods dash all. Uh, so you can see I'm not. There's nothing really running on this. It's just a vanilla kind cluster that that got set up. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, K apply and apply that that YAML. So here. Um, you're going to see that the pods are starting up. Uh, we've got the two, the two containers uh, that are going to be running right side by side. Um, and if we look and do kget uh, services, we'll see that there's a WASI service that's running on this port and exposing the two TCP ports so that we can uh, query them. Uh, by now, uh, even on my slow machine, that those pods should be up and running. Uh, and so we can now... Uh, port forward those two ports to the local host. And if I open up a new shell, I can do, actually, we'll just do um, curl localhost 80. Uh, that's from the Go artifact that was built on his Mac. Now we saw it running on Windows. Now we're seeing it run on a Kubernetes cluster with Linux. And uh, we can also see the C Sharp artifact that we built out. And so we'll swap one more time and do yet again, it's like, but wait, there's more kind of thing here. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and do it one more time. The point of all of what we're trying to do inside of this space right now is to improve this reusability. We don't want to be reinventing the wheel for everything. There's plenty we can all um, compete on and innovate on later. We need to be able to do all these things together um, and reuse this stuff we're building. So I'm going to show this doing something very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just also going to check that I did all the cleanup from earlier demos. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start Wasm Cloud locally. So we'll give this a second, and that's all spun up. So now that I have this running, um, we have a manifest format called WDAM. This can be also applied through Kubernetes and running Kubernetes. I'm just running it locally for now. So if I do um, VI on here, we'll see that we have my um, my uh, basically manifest here that's saying, I'm going to spin up a component, connect an HTTP server to it, um, and I'm doing this in a dynamically linked way. So instead of using the embedded um, WASM time things, I'm dynamically linking in an HTTP server. And I'm gonna go ahead and come down here and change it to uh, James's one. Oops, let's not do that, shall we? 
go ahead and delete that. And it is, you're gonna have to remind me your URL, James. <laughs> Jay Sturdivant. Okay. I did a select. <laughs> E-V-A-N-T, right? Got it right? Yep. Okay. Wasm.com C-sharp. Wasm.com C-sharp. And that's zero, 010, zero, if I remember right. Yep. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna point at the one he created on his Windows machine using C-sharp. Um, and now run it in Wasm Cloud running on my local machine. So we'll go ahead and do this, and I will do um, wash app deploy for this and set it up. Okay, it's deployed it. We'll give it a second to pull down as well. Um, okay, looks like it's deployed. I'm just gonna double check because I never trust conference Wi-Fi. One second. Okay, perfect, it's all running. So now um, I have this setup, I believe, to do port 8080, so if I do curl localhost 8080, I just got the C-sharp artifact. So you've now seen at these components being used in about three or four different ways in a bunch of different platforms and being used um, from, I'm mean, being built on different platforms, I should say, and then being pushed and shared in the exact same way using the exact same shared interfaces from everyone else. So to finish this up, let's just review that. Um, we did all of these cool things. We did all the, we showed how all of this is supposed to work. These things are available now. There are still rough edges, like anything else that's new, there are still rough edges, you might find them, but we're trying to let people know that it's there. So if you're someone who works on language tool chains, try to implement it, try to use it, try to put it in the things that you're doing. Let us know what sucks. We already know that some of the config format for this underlying wackage tooling kind of sucks. And you know what? That's because we put it into these tools, found out, hey, that's kind of complicated. I don't really like that. And so we're gonna start to change it. Um, we're at that stage where we're trying to rapidly innovate through these things and make it even better each time we use it. So let's talk a little bit about future plans. The first one here is we're trying to work with a lot of these registry providers, people who think cloud providers, um, GitHub and their, their packaging stuff to be able to index the config for the component. They'll be able to label this and say, hey, I know what this config type is, it's Wasm, and here are the things that you're looking for. In the future, you're gonna wanna be able to say, hey, I'm trying to import WASI key value. What implements that? And you can ask that question and then have somebody search and have somebody search for it and then be able to say, okay, here's these things that, that implement it for you. This is firmly in the idea section. Um, I was talking with people like, uh, like Luke Wagner about this. Um, we're thinking about maybe encoding these WIT dependencies instead of being a WIT package, which is what we were downloading, and instead in, um, serializing them out as JSON, which is currently possible, but isn't really out in a spec. And that would make it a lot easier for some of these language tool chains to implement generators and things, so they don't have to know how to parse binary WIT. Um, that's, but we're, we're still working through that. Obviously, integration language tool chains. Another huge shout out to James for that. He got this all working in C-sharp very quickly, um, as quick as language tool chains can go. Um, and, it, and there's also a lot of work going on um, from people like uh, Joe and Randy and a couple others who are working on the Go side of things who are also implementing this in there. So any, if you're interested in the language tool chain part, integrating this into language tool chains, that's kind of the next step. Because the more, th that wackage CLI you were showing is something that should mostly be for debugging or people who are doing super advanced stuff, not for the normal use case. And then also just answer the question for us as you're trying this out. What would you like to see? What is it you'd like to do? Um, and then what we can do is move forward. There's a reason why WasmCon has this phrase of better together. We're, we're at that better together phase. We're trying, we're getting this adoption, we're getting these people trying to do this and use these things in real life scenarios. And when you get tools like this, this is much better than we, than we used to do where we were just pointing at flat files that hopefully were in the right place from a GitHub repo. Um, we wanted to have standard ways of sharing this, standard ways to go through all the security processes like James was mentioning before. So, um, call to action here. Um, we have try it out, like I was saying. You have a couple links here to different blog posts. You wrote, let's see, you wrote both of those, James? The I was C involved in both of them, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, the C Sharp and Rust ones, one of those is on um, the Microsoft blog, right? And one is on the, the BCA blog. Um, the Wasm Cloud link is one about how we implemented this into our WASH tool, um, and that's on the Wasm Cloud blog. The two links on the right are those, those two blog posts. Um, and then also you can try adding support to your favorite language or platform or whatever. You could also join the CNCF working group, um, which is one of the QR codes. Sorry, we put a lot of QR codes and then changed our minds about one. So yeah, those, those are all, they will point you to good things. Um, 
And so come join the CNCF WASM working group. Uh, like James said, like this wouldn't have happened had James not come in and been like, hey, I have a WASM and you have a WASM, can we make it work together? And so we really wanna make sure people know that that's there and available. Um, anything else you wanted to add for the call to action, James? I think that's great. Okay, awesome. So with that, let's go ahead and leave some time for some questions. Here, we're gonna, I'll do the runner. Could you just elaborate a little bit on the run config when you were deploying it into Kubernetes? The runtime config part? Yeah, yeah I'll let James do that. Yeah, so um, the question was, can you elaborate on how it's running in Kubernetes? Um, and so, yeah, so um, Containerd has a concept of shims. Uh, and so Containerd is a platform that will do a bunch of uh, image management and um, make sure the containers are up and running, but it actually delegates out the, the running of the container to a shim. Uh, and there's a run C shim, and that's the one that you probably are using if you use Containerd today. Um, and so uh, there's uh, someone on my team, Brian Goff, he came up with this idea to run, uh, to create a different shim that would run WASM. Uh, and so, th and that shim, we basically translate the Kubernetes or the um, OCI or the, um, the runtime spec to uh, tr translating it into a like running it as a WASM container. Uh, and, and so then there's, uh, in, at the Kubernetes layer, there's this runtime, con uh, runtime config, uh, and that's how you actually translate back down to uh, which shim is running underneath the hood. Yeah, so, uh, so, so the question was, is that similar and, uh, or the same as what Spin and uh, Spin Cloud or um, Spin Cube is doing? Uh, yeah, so Spin Cube is using Run WASI under the hood. Uh, and so, and Spin Cube is, is an entire platform that will help you install and manage and create all that and run it all uh, at the same time, so yeah. Okay. Uh, and just to add to that question, so did you have to do anything special to that uh, uh, kind cluster to cause it to u allow uh, WASM to run, or was it just that little bit of Kubernetes spec that you showed? You have to have that shim installed on the the nodes. Okay, and so is you, that like a kind parameter you can just specify when you're creating a kind cluster, or? Uh, no, uh, so okay. um, we basically, uh, when you're building the Docker, when we build, we build a custom Docker image for the kind, and we just uh, install that binary on the location right next to the run shim, or it just has to be on the path. Um, and, and that's where SpinCube comes into play. So SpinCube well, kind of has some tooling that will make that kind of transparent to you. You don't necessarily have to, um, have to figure out how to manage that, because it can be kind of challenging. So if I want to do this, I should use SpinCube? Uh, it would, it, it, that will help automate a lot of it, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so I was kind of curious comparing like the shim and that runtime config versus a like running a container with something like uh, WASM edge runtime, right? Uh, what are you hoping to get out of running it through a shim and doing this custom runtime? Is there any targets that you're looking for? Is it performance? Uh... Uh, yes, um, so we actually support WASM edge in, um, in run WASI. Uh, and the idea behind this is to simplify, uh, or actually make it so that you can have, you don't have to ship the WASM edge with every single container. Uh, and so you can get higher density through the system. Uh, and David would probably be able to. Uh, I'd add to that as well. <clears throat> when you build a native image with a, a Linux container image containing WASM edge, it's now architecture dependent. So uh, by moving the runtime into the node, it's, you're moving the architecture dependent part to the node itself. And then the only thing that you have to care about is the WebAssembly uh, component. And the WebAssembly component is, uh, by its nature, architecture and OS independent. So now that, that artifact is able to run on uh, ARM64, uh, AMD64, Windows, uh, whatever you want using the OCI artifact that we covered today. Yeah. 
that's the core thing here is we want this to work across, there's many ways to do things. We want to make sure this works across every single one of them. So the whole point is to be um, a standard that we can all follow along. So we, we have this spec out there. We'll obviously iterate on it as Wasm continues to evolve and, and bump the version. And so that's what we'll be able to do with it. So I think we're at time. So we'll go ahead and end it there. And if you'd like to ask more questions, feel free to come on up. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>